We've talked about two ways of profit maximizing, the direct method and the two-step method. So now I want to illustrate how these methods actually get to the same answer with a specific example. So suppose we have a production function 21 L to the one third K to the one third. That's a Cobb-Douglas production function. And since the exponents on the inputs sum to less than one, it's a decreasing returns to scale production function. So it's getting harder and harder to produce from the first unit on when we can vary both labor and capital at the same time. So the long run profit maximizing problem is now the following. We want to maximize choosing a production plan X, L, and K profit, where profit is price times output, that's the revenue, minus the labor costs, minus the cost of capital, the rental rate times the amount of capital we choose. But this has to be technologically feasible, so we have a constraint. So we have to maximize this subject to the constraint that the output we produce is actually what comes out of the production function. So x is equal to 21 times l to the one-third k to the one-third. Now, it's a little bit easier to do that problem if we substitute this constraint into what we call the objective function. And we just have to take two derivatives rather than three, which we would have to do if we set up the Lagrangian. So we can rewrite this problem as maximize choosing labor and capital profit, which is equal to price times output, where output is now what comes out of the production function when we use labor and capital. So 21 times L to the one-third K to the one-third minus WL minus RK. So all we've done is substitute this in for X over here. So we can now find the profit maximizing levels of labor and capital by just differentiating profit with respect to labor and capital and setting that equal to zero. So if we differentiate profit with respect to labor, we get one third times 21, that gives us seven, P times L to the minus two thirds, K to the one third. And then we have a minus W, differentiate this with respect to W, and that has to be equal to zero. The second derivative, we take the derivative of profit with respect to capital, that's going to be equal to 7p times l to the one-third, k to the minus two-thirds, and then minus r. And that has to be equal to zero. We can take that first equation and solve it for either k or l. It doesn't matter which one. Let's solve for k. So first we'll take the w to the other side. So we get 7p times l to the minus two-thirds k to the one-third is equal to w. And then we move everything that's not a k to the other side. So we get k to the one-third is equal to w divided by 7p, divide by this. And this is 1 over l to the two-thirds, so we can multiply both sides by l to the two-thirds to move it over here. Now we just have to cube both sides to get k to be by itself. So we get k is equal to w over 7p to the third times l. And taking this to the third, we multiply the two thirds by three, and we're just left with l squared. Now that we have capital just as a function of labor and the input prices, we can substitute this in for capital over here and get this to be just a function of labor. So we'll use this equation and say that 7p times L to the one-third. And then I'm going to put big brackets, and I'll just put this in for k. So w over 7p to the third times L squared. And that whole thing is taken to the minus two-thirds. Now I'll move the r to the other side, so that's equal to r. So now we have a bunch of things to simplify. 
So we have a 7p here and a 7p to the third here, but that's going to be taken to the negative two-thirds. So 7p to the third, multiply that 3 by negative two-thirds, and we get a negative 2. So we get a 7p to the minus 2 here and a 7p here. We subtract the exponent of 1. Well, we subtract the minus 2 from the exponent of 1, and that leaves us with 7p to the third. So there's a bunch of steps here, but we're just simplifying the 7p term. What about w? We have w to the third. We take that to the minus two-thirds, so three times minus two-thirds will be minus two, so we get a w squared on the bottom. So w to the minus two is just one over w squared. And then we have l to the one-third here and l squared here, but we have to take that to the minus two-thirds, so two times minus two-thirds gives us minus four-thirds. So L to the one-third times L to the minus four-thirds, we subtract the exponents, one-third minus four-thirds, is just L to the minus one. And that's equal to R. Now we want to just get L to one side, so that's one over L here, so we multiply both sides by L. That gives us L on one side. And then we still have the 7P to the third divided by w squared and we have to divide by r both sides and we get this equation. This here now tells us how much labor we're going to hire for any output price and any set of input prices. So that's our labor demand function. Finally, we have this expression for k as just a function of l and the input prices and the output price. Uh, so we can just substitute this L into here. So when we do that, we get K is equal to W over 7P to the third. So that's W over 7P to the third times L squared. And we're going to use this L. So again, I'll put big brackets around this. 7P to the third divided by w squared times r. And all that gets taken to the second power. So we've just put this in for L to get this. And now we can simplify that. We have a w to the third here and a w squared here mm -hmm. that we're going to square again. So that'll put a w to the fourth power in the denominator here. We have a w to the third power here. 3 minus 4 is minus 1, so we get a w on the bottom. We have a 7p to the third here. A 7p to the third, but that's squared, so that actually becomes a 7p to the sixth. So 6 minus the exponent of 3 here gives us 7p to the third on the top. And then we finally have the r. We've just had an r squared on the bottom. So we have another input demand function. So k is just a function of the output price and the input prices. For any output price and input prices, it tells us how much capital we're going to hire. It's our input demand function for capital. And notice it looks similar to the one for l, except the roles of w and r are reversed. That's because we have L and K entering symmetrically into the production function. We could even multiply this out and say that that's just equal to 7 to the third is 343. P to the third divided by W R squared. And similarly, this is 343. P to the third divided by W squared times R. So here we've got our labor demand function, and here we have our capital demand function, a function that simply tells us, as a function of prices, input and output prices, how much labor and capital we'll hire if we maximize profits. 
Finally, we can figure out the output supply function because we know how much labor and how much capital you're going to hire for any set of prices. We just put those expressions into the production function to figure out how much output you're going to produce. So output is going to be 21 times, and I'll put brackets again, put my labor term in here, 343 times P to the third over W squared R. That's just labor from this expression, to the one-third. And similarly, we'll put capital in, 343 times P to the third over W times R squared. And all that's taken to the one-third. So now we have things to simplify again. We have 21 times 343 to the one-third 343 to the one-third, so that's 343 to the two-thirds. P to the third to the one-third power is just P. Another P to the third to the one-third power is P, so P times P is going to be P squared. W squared to the one-third is W to the two-thirds. Here we have a W to the one-third. So 2 thirds plus 1 third will just give us a W. And R to the 1 third times R to the 2 thirds will just give us R. And when we multiply that out, we get 1029 times P squared over WR. So that now tells us for any, for any input prices and output price, how much we're going to supply. So that becomes our supply function. So now once we have that, we can say that a firm with this technology will hire this much labor, this much capital, and this much out produce this much output for any prices and any wages and rental rates that you'll give me.